Hello everyone, and welcome to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this series, we are going to set up bases on various celestial bodies, something I haven't done much of in any of my videos. I rarely set up more than one little building, uh, maybe a crew canister of some kind on, on uh, landing legs, and that's about it. Uh, so this is going to be a new experience for me, especially since I'll be using mods that I don't usually use. This one, Tack Life Support, I use all the time. We are going to say no to allow respawn. Oh, it uh, decided to bring up that window because that's behind it. Okay. Anyway, uh, but otherwise everything normal. Uh, extra planetary launch pad. I have not used this before. I don't even know what allow progressive builds means. Okay. Uh, hold on. I didn't want to go there yet. Okay. All right, uh, I think that's it, is it? Um, I'm surprised I'm not getting a tech tree warning here, actually, because we do have KSP Interstellar hiding somewhere, but okay. All right, so now I'm going to talk while I unlock all the stuff that uh, I have here. You see that the tech tree has been already partly done, though not on the higher levels here. And the reason for that is that uh, this is actually my save from the stock series. So I've got the stock series save, you know, that's going to continue the stock series, which is the efficient design series. Uh, that series will continue as is, but I copied the save over so that I wouldn't have to start from scratch in this series. So that's what I've done. But that, of course, requires me to unlock all these parts that come with the mods that I want to use in this series. And uh, those mods are, first of all, and most importantly, the reason why this is the colonization series is because we are using the modular colonization system and orbital construction system, MKS and OKS from uh, USI Colonization, that mod is the main mod that we are looking at. It also includes Carbonite, which is the re uh, resource extraction mod, and that's what some of these tanks are. This is tack life support here that I'm unlocking here. Uh, but uh, So Carbonite is sort of a counterpart to Cathane, but the benefit to Carbonite is, uh, first of all, I like some of the uh, the system involved, and also it helps that it is uh, compatible with KSB Interstellar, which is uh, probably the second largest mod that I'm using here. So KSB Interstellar is in here, though we won't be doing too much with it for a long while. But it'll give us something to construct in orbit, uh, something to do, because of course KSB Interstellar has uh, antimatter production and stuff like that. Now uh, here we are unlocking some of the stuff for the MKS OKS mod. Aside from those two mods and TAC Life Support, I also have KAS, uh, the Kerbal Attachment System, which in the mod showcase on MKS and OKS, I noted Kerbal Attachment System would be helpful. So you can see the ground pylon from Kerbal Attachment System right there. Uh, what else? Uh, of course, MechJeb, because uh, if I'm going to do a modded series, I will have MechJeb, uh, not to control anything, but to give me the data that I like. Uh, you can see procedural fairings here, and if there's procedural fairings, you know that I'm probably going to be using firm aerospace, and that is indeed the case. So firm aerospace is installed, as is deadly reentry. So this is quite a bit uh, more difficult in my stock series, and in fact, the stuff that I was uh, using my stock series to get the credits that or funds that I've gotten and the science that I've gotten. Uh, would not work here because uh, primarily of uh, firm aerospace, though uh, partly the return part uh, would be subject to deadly reentry. Though I think uh, for the most part I would have been able to make those returns safely regardless. Deadly reentry here is not quite as uh, painful as it is in real solar system. And of course that's because we're not coming in at uh, 7.8 meters per s uh, kilometers per second. So that's a good thing. So we've got those. We've got ScanSat. Okay, and that should help. Uh, it said on the MKS OKS uh, page that ScanSat was a thing that uh, would be compatible. Basically, I've just installed the mods that I saw were compatible. So 
for instance, uh, it said Cargo Transportation Solutions, which I think is a mod that's name has changed since then. But uh, yeah, that that uh, mod I've installed, never played around with that before. One that I have played around with is Infernal Robotics, and that is installed. Uh, aside from procedural fairings, there's also procedural parts. And um, that's also to smooth things out a bit, because otherwise with with uh, firm aerospace it gets a little bit dicey. So we want smooth lines on everything so that firm aerospace does not give us any aerodynamic failures. Okay and uh, real shoot, ship manifest, not too much explaining needed for that. Uh, I've installed Carbonite Plus though uh, I'm not, I, I don't know if it's uh, really necessary or not. I, uh, it provides smaller parts, like smaller drills and stuff like that, so maybe that's good. We'll see. Um, extra planetary launch pads you saw at the beginning, and that's probably the one that worries me the most since I haven't used that at all in anything, ever. And it seems very complicated. Well, not quite as complicated as MKS and OKS, but still. Um, so, uh, KSP Interstellar Light, so it's actually the the newer version of it, uh, not by the original author, but still uh, basically the same idea. And that's because the original version of uh, KSP Interstellar is not compatible with uh, uh, KSP 24.2 as far as I know. So I to start this uh, whole series out by just talking over all the mods like this, but uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover and it's probably best that I specify exactly what I'm doing with all these mods right up front because otherwise there'll be questions there'll still be questions but that's fine okay other than those uh, I've also got connected living space again because uh, MKS and OKS uh, recommended it and uh, USI's exploration pack which provides the pack rat rover among other things but I'm especially interested in the rover because I want to be able to move things about and uh, just in general, I find the rover parts that come with uh, KSP by default are a little bit lacking in some areas. So we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the rest of me unlocking all these and come back to you once I've got it all done. Okay, I think I've got them all covered. And so the reason I'm doing it like this is, of course, because one, I want to have the limitations of uh, some limitations of science, but mostly the limitations of the budget, which you can only get in career mode. So I want that limitation and having to do contracts and all that. But what I didn't want was to start all the way at the beginning, which would be tedious for most of it, especially since the parts that uh, come uh, uh, that are part of the colonization system are in uh, uh, advanced construction here and uh, specialized construction here. So I wanted to jumpstart on that and make sure that we've got those in. My goal for this episode is to get us some of the rover parts, especially the stuff that comes with the pack rat rover here you can see. Uh, but that's secondary. The first thing we need is some sort of fuel depot in orbit, something I didn't do in the stock series yet because I had just unlocked docking ports. And so now that I have the docking ports, I will uh, proceed with making a fuel depot in this series as the first mission. That will of course be coming out of our own budget, there is no contract for it, so we'll have to uh, deal with that. But uh, let's go to the VAB and take a look at what I've cooked up. Okay, so here it is. This is the Moo Fuel Depot, and it's named after the texture actually. It's, uh, I, I have never used this texture before, and I decided to use it for this fuel depot. Rather uniquely shaped, shaped depot with uh, docking ports on either end. Uh, shielded one at the top and then uh, unshielded one at the bottom here, uh, 1.25 of course. And so um, liquid fuel and oxidizer, the center tank is the monopropellant and it also has food, water and oxygen and also space for waste. So it's got all that going for it. It's got uh, solar panels, RCS, uh, the little thrusters and there you have it. Uh, so that's the fuel depot. It uh, clocks in at uh, about 29 tons. And so I needed a launcher that was capable of getting that up into orbit. Now we haven't unlocked the main sail or any more advanced uh, rockets. So we had to make do with what we had. Let me just... Uh, 
No, I probably want that here, I think. Yeah. Okay, so the launcher it, uh, it comes in two variants. Actually, I've got a Moon Express and this is the Kerbin Express. The Moon Express just has an extra third stage on it. So this can actually, this will be the two stages to get into orbit. These can actually lift enough to get the Moon Express's uh, third stage up as well. The Moon Express can carry 20 tons. Uh, this can carry more than 30 tons into orbit, probably closer to 40. Um, but uh, what we have here is this is a main, uh, not a mainsail, uh, this is a skipper. And of course this is a procedural tank, Atlas texture. Uh, the fuel is as you see it. Uh, three meters in diameter and that's so that the fairing doesn't have to stretch too far when getting around 2.5 meters apart. Now on the bottom, I swear this is not illegal clipping, this is just normal clipping. Uh, so uh, it is not uh, the cheat menu, this is just uh, sort of a variant of what I usually do. And the way I did it was also it's the tank that is actually attaching to the skipper here, this skipper, no, that's this skipper, uh, actually uh, is a smooth conic that uh, bends in. So it uh, creates room for these other things. These uh, LVT-30s, I believe? Yes. So these LVT-30s do not have gimbling, and that's because I needed the thrust. If you take a look at the... Hmm, I've got something wrong here. Okay, uh, well, this is... Either it's giving me stats that are different from before, or I did something wrong. I am facing limitations in the volume of these, that's why I use multiple ones. And uh, it's because if I try to stretch this anymore, as you can see, it limits me to this amount. That's that. So, no luck there. Anyway, I needed the thrust, so I had to put the LVT-30s rather than the T-45s, which uh, created a gimbling problem, and because of the gimbling problem, I had to... Uh, in other words, there's no gimbling on these, and only one degree of the gimbling on here, and that's not... Oh, that's why I've got a problem. I accidentally clicked thrust on the turn. Ah, okay. Sorry, folks. A little bit messed up here. Okay, that should fix everything, yes. And it looks like my thrust weight ratio is what I expected it to be. Good. Anyway, so only one degree of gimbling here, so that's why I have to put fins. Simple as that. So the fins help with control. There's also a reaction wheel in the base here uh, before the decoupler. Okay, checking staging. It looks okay. Got that saved now. Alright, so let's try and put this fuel depot into orbit. It'll cost us 91,000 funds, and so that's a big bite out of our budget, and there's no contract to go with it. Let me clear this stuff up here. We should uh, definitely have the information here clear. Okay. So yeah, we don't have any, uh, though we do have this outstanding contract, transmit or recover scientific data from space around the moon. I, I don't know why we haven't done that already. Uh, maybe we should do that. So I'll look into that contract right after we set this uh, fuel depot up. All right, so let's go out and launch. All right, so here we are on the launch pad. Throttle is up, SAS is on. I should mention that there's one mod that I didn't mention before that I'm using, and that's uh, Active Texture Management Basic. And the reason I had to use that, I tried to not use it, and uh, we're working in 32-bit here because it's more stable, and uh, if you've got to build huge colonies and all sorts of space stations, you should probably go with the more stable version of Kerbal Space Program. So I'm doing that, but uh, that means I'm under the RAM limit, and I tried to keep all these mods under the RAM limit, and it just barely scratches it. It obviously started up uh, fine, but uh, once you get about half an hour into it, it then crashes. So I had to add uh, active texture management. And so the good thing about that is I've got extra RAM space now. So if you have any suggestions about mods that I should add to the list and, uh, you know, maybe something that'll help. Nothing that's too uh, non... I mean, focus on the colonization thing or contracts. I'm thinking about fine print. But uh, if you have any suggestions, just uh, throw it out there. Uh, we're still in flux here. All right, uh, lighting engines, and go. And I say we're still in flux uh, with uh, one particular thing in mind, and that's the fact that uh, just uh, yesterday, I think, 
all of these, uh, well not all of them, a lot of these mods got an update. Uh, so just after I've tested everything and gotten all these mods together, sure enough they all update themselves. So uh, not, not all of them literally, but uh, a lot of the important ones that are most connected with the USI colonization system. So still in flux, I'm gonna have to update those and that means I'm gonna have to do more testing which means that of course uh, if you want to suggest another mod there's room for it since I'm gonna have to do retesting on all this stuff anyway. Okay I have to remember that I'm doing far here and not uh, doing stock KSP so I need to start rotating. We have, uh, that's not me rotating it right now. Uh, I'm just trying to get the pitch change but we've got a roll going that's a little bit worrisome and my pitch is not uh, so it doesn't seem like I have enough gimbling right now even okay so I'm gonna have to keep it very close to the prograde vector and that's not efficient right now we really need to be at a lower pitch at this point Come on, rocket. Okay, a little bit better now. Surprised with uh, not only the fins but the but the reaction wheel that we should have so much roll that uh, is unintended. Okay, I think the reaction wheel and SAS are compensating for that a little bit better now. But we are at a high pitch for this point in the flight. We're going to set up this fuel depot around uh, Kerbin, obviously, and it'll be at zero inclination for, for use to the moon, and of course to the rest of the system, not for Minmus. Still haven't figured out whether it's a good idea to try and colonize Minmus with the low gravity. It's got its pluses and minuses. The biggest minus being it's very hard to actually move things around on the surface using rover wheels. Okay, we've got a lot of spin now. Did I strut the payload upright? Maybe that's a problem. Ooh, will the fairings separate properly now? I think I've got the most updated version of procedural fairings. Let's see about that. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Do that now. Oh, good, good, good separation. Okay, apoapsis wise we're okay right now, but I want it a little bit higher because things have to rendezvous to this. Still with the spin here. Okay, that's that stage. Let's have, uh, well, let's just double check everything. Separation. That's an odd way for that fairing to go. I don't know why it went sideways. Huh. Okay, just uh, coasting up a little bit. Okay, now. Let's go. Hmm, the placement of these lights didn't seem like a good idea. Uh, not that one. This light doesn't seem to do anything. This is meant to light whatever is approaching the docking port. I guess we'll open the shield. At least the shield doesn't block that light. I think this side worked out a little bit better. Okay, now I'm gonna let the second stage re-enter. I'm going to have the the fuel depot itself uh, power itself for the rest of its uh, orbit. Okay, so let's let that go. And we'll just casually work our way up now. 
So as you can tell from this design, I want to go for a certain degree of uniqueness. Try Because we're going to be using the preset parts in the USI colonization system, so that's going to be pretty standard. Everybody's going to be able to do that the same. But then I've got leeway with procedural parts. I gotta add the extra textures, black hearts extra textures to that so that we have a little bit more flexibility with that. But then I'll have a lot more freedom to make things look a little bit more distinctive. Now unlike my efficient design uh, series, this is obviously not starting out with a reusability bent to it. But we might eventually have to go there. And if so, I just uh, recorded the the mod showcase episode for Deb Refund, Stage Recovery, and FMRS. So I got my first experience with some of that stuff. And I will see which one I may want to add to this. So if you've got any comments about those particular mods, uh, feel free to contribute those. And uh, maybe one of those will help us out and give me a good reason to try some re reusability stuff here. Uh, especially since uh, we can't use those mods in the stock series, right? I need some way to make it distinctive from the stock series. Well, except for the fact that we've got a far and deadly re-entry, of course. That does make things a little bit more challenging to reuse. But, uh, yeah, so uh, just a uh, note about that. I am uh, pondering that, but not quite sure what to do about that just yet. Now if we're going to be landing stuff on the moon to, or anywhere, maybe Val even, uh, to make a colony, we're going to be reasonably precise about things. So there's no more of the shady business here. Uh, we've got an inclination of uh, less than 0.08. Not ideal, but uh, we'll take that for now. Let us uh, go to Apoapsis and try and continue this. So maybe the unofficial subtitle for this should be the Precise Design Bureau and we'll try and uh, be more precise than I usually am. I'll probably end up lazy anyway. Uh, it'll happen. It just happens that I'm recording this over the weekend. I'm a little bit uh, more relaxed than I usually am. Okay, that's... And here I was talking about precise. Anyway, <laughs> that's good enough. 120. I'm satisfied. See how quickly I can change. All right, so so we've got our our fuel depot up, all nice and neat. And now what we need to do is get a mission over to either the moon or Minmus in order to grab some science, especially, but also to fulfill some sort of contract. Let's go to the let's go to the mission control to see what kind of contracts we've got and what we can pick up, because so we need money. And we need science. So in terms of active contracts, all we've got is science data from space around the moon, which I, I don't know why we haven't already gotten already, uh, and explore Duna. Now, we, we don't want to do anything to do with Duna. We just want to keep it sort of local. <laughs> Test this engine, land it on Minmus. That should be interesting. Huh. Okay, uh, test the ion engine. We can do both. We can test this one landed on Minmus, and uh, we can test this one on an escape trajectory. Let's do that. Okay, we've got our contracts. Uh, let's see if we can also do some science along the way. So we need a probe core. I'm going to want to transmit the science, so we're going to have to do that. So let's say... Um, Commutron will do. 0.8 tons, not bad. It might not be calculating the heat shield though. Ah, 2.2 tons. The heat shield is, uh, yeah, 1.4 tons, wow. Okay, the heat shield decouples. So uh, we don't really have to worry about the parachutes, they'll be just fine. Uh, so this is uh, some science. Let's get some more science on here. Now, well, I want to test it, but it, it's going to be expensive if I test it and we don't bring it back safely, huh? How much is it? Wow, 5,700. That's pretty expensive. Okay, and some tanks of 
Xenon, right? Oh, but they haven't given us uh, tanks of Xenon. But I think I can create my own, right? Oh, nope, not like that. Oh, or not, maybe. Procedural tanks, do we have? Support. Launch pad tank. Don't know what that's about. Could use the procedural battery, though. So that's how we'll mount that. And instead of putting the antenna on the top, we'll put it on the side. We don't really need an antenna. I don't have the mode tech on here, but we may want to transmit the data just in case it's too valuable. Oh, not two of them. So we have to use the... Oh, wow. Forgot how big that thing is. Should be interesting. Ah, this has smooth cone. Good. Oh... But I'm limited to three. Ouch. Well, didn't see that coming. What kind of Delta? Oh, we got plenty of Delta V on this. We just got to land it on that thing. But no, then we, uh, we're testing it on the surface. We have to use something else to land. Okay. This looks so wrong. See what you've done to me, contract system. <laughs> so we're gonna try and land on this thing. Thereby fulfilling that contract. We're gonna light the ion engine. Try and bring that back. How expensive is this? Wow, 65,000. Might not even be worth it. How much is the contract worth? Can't see from here. Oh, well, we've got the contract now. This is uh, 20,000 altogether, all on its own. Man, I want to bring this back. It's all very expensive. How much is this without... Oh, that's 30,000, but we're not going to bring all of it back. Oh, well, maybe we will. Maybe we'll be all right. Okay, well, we'll try this. This is silly, but um, at least we'll get some science out of it, and uh, we'll fulfill those contracts, so that's good. All right, uh, we'll use the Moon Express. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, this is what we get for trusting the contract system to give us something good. Okay. Okay, I've got a bad feeling about this. First of all, let me go to the contract. So this is going to be Minmus test bed, and this is going to be on the Moon Express. But before I launch this crazy thing, let me take a look at whether it's worth it based on the contracts. Okay, so I decided to sleep on this whole thing because anytime you're trying to do something this ridiculous, it's probably a good idea to get some rest before you actually decide to launch it. And uh, so I also checked the contract, and we do have we do have some issues here, uh, but we do have um, enough cash if we complete this mission. If we complete this mission, we would have enough cash for three of these launches, so that's covered somewhat. Uh, so that's that's not a problem, but I still think that this is going a bit too far. So what I'm going to do is actually do each of the experiments separately. So we'll do one launch to Minmus testing the ion engine, and then another launch testing the Kerbidine, and that way we can bring them both down. So instead of doing this whole thing, and uh, perhaps we'll use a smaller launcher just to save cash as well. Otherwise it's going to cost a lot more. So we're going to do just this part first, and that will allow us to land in two different places on Minmus. So that's an added plus. So this is all we're going to test and bring back, and at a cost of 25,000 funds. And aside from that, I'll just build it off camera, and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so this is the basic outline of our lander. 
And I'm gonna reduce the ablative of shielding on this since we can do that and it saves some mass. And I'm gonna set it to 600 because I think that'll be enough for the return to uh, to Kerbin. Though I can't quite hit 600 there. Okay, uh, landing lights. Okay, so this is what I've got. I decided that even using the second stage of the rocket we've already designed would be uh, unnecessary. So all we've got is the first stage and I'll save some cash so we don't have to uh, worry too much about that. Though it's still probably more expensive than I need it to be. Uh, but it'll handle the transit and then everything else will be handled by the lander. And well, I'll handle most of the transit. Uh, some of it will have to... Well, maybe. Uh, with FAR it's tough to say. I've, I'm so used to calculating all the stuff uh, with uh, just default stock without any uh, FAR when it comes to Kerbin that uh, for Kerbin I usually think about 4,500 meters per second but with FAR it's less than that so anyway so our rocket seems well it looks like this it's probably already too overpowered but I don't want to build a totally new launcher I want this series to be very consistent about the launchers we use and so uh, we're going to be doing that and so fairing skull like that and I think we're ready to go so we'll test the ion engine first and we'll make a landing on Minmus and we'll see how all that goes let me just check that our contract okay so escape trajectory out of Minmus remember uh, I started this yesterday so I want to make sure everything is good and we're not the moon express anymore we just uh, I guess I'll just call the first stage the Express. Okay, uh, so let's, yeah, let's launch this thing. Okay, here we are on the launch pad. I do have lights uh, inside the payload, on the payload. Oh, okay, uh, they shine through the procedural fairings. That's good. Okay, so we've got those. Uh, though they'll drain the battery a little bit, I guess. All right, so uh, we don't need Delta V stats anymore. That's all design stuff. And let's get started. Okay, we don't need full thrust. I have to remember that. Uh, maybe about there. Still got the rotational issue here. And I still... I mean, it's... I just... Actually, I should have just put the gimbling engines on the outside for this one. This is the way I use Smart ASS. It's just uh, I program. Oh darn! This is uh, I need it at a lower pitch. I forgot far. I, again, so used to stock now. With uh, whenever I'm dealing with Kerbin, I'm dealing with stock. So uh, okay, let's be careful about this. Rocket's going pretty good so far, but let's go to full power here. Okay, horrible launch, but we're headed out to Minmus, uh, and wouldn't you know it, it's on the wrong side. So, my extra apoapsis did not help. Not a huge problem, but still. How much Delta V do we have left in this stage? Up, oh, just enough. So, yep, yeah, uh, we this handled both the launch and the transit and if I had done a more efficient launch it would have been much better off though we would still have to have ditched it so didn't really matter yep yeah, I think we can decouple yep right now for transit we have to make sure that our solar panels are going to be well lit. Okay, so here we are, our, our approach to Minmus. A little bit different altitude than I initially thought, but okay.
That will do. And all we have to do is find a landing place aside from the Greater Flats. That's the only place I landed in this in the stock save, so that is what we're trying to do here. Where are you, Minmus? Is that it? Must be. So we landed over here in the in the original series and the continuing series. So we're just gonna land on the opposite side this time. Right around here. So basically uh, if you haven't gotten it, uh, what this episode has been is basically testing out our new launcher for one thing. Very important. Uh, and also you know that I have the heat shield and intend to re-enter this, so I'm gonna be testing out deadly re-entry because I haven't played deadly deadly entry re-entry with Kerbin for a long time, so I want to make sure I know how all that works out before I start trying to send things too far. And of course, we are getting the science we need to unlock the rover parts. So that was the goal for this episode, and we are well on our way to handling that. So now my plan is to transmit any signs that uh, obviously we get more than like 80% worth from just transmitting and then bringing everything else back. Oh no, oh no, 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 come on. Uh Oh It's really easy for them to do that I'm in this, I think. But uh oh But we happen to have a rolling chassis, if you will. So maybe if I get the gear up and this stops rolling around. I don't really have a reaction wheel. I only have the tiny little bit of uh, reaction wheel. Why is this still going? Okay, yeah, well, let's do some science while we're here, shall we? Um, yeah. So, observe the materials bay. Uh-huh. I hesitate to even keep the data when it's rolling around like this. Let's uh, observe mystery goo. <laughs> of course, I could extend the... Uh, the landing legs and that would be fine but not a really good idea to get the seismic accelerometer reading when you're rolling around like this uh, do we get to get a reading oh maybe we don't oh okay is there any way to get brakes on no uh, let's extend the landing gear again maybe we'll stop rolling if we do that Okay, now maybe we can get an accelerometer reading. No, not really. Okay, log pressure data. Can't be done because it's minus. And this... Still not 80%, so I guess I'll keep it. Forgot that there was it was so hard around here. So we really can't get a reading on the seismometer? Maybe we're still jittering around too much. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna want to transmit some of this data, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. This will be a failed mission completely. Let's see. Uh, review data here. That's not really worth it. But oh, I've got a spare goo container. Maybe I'll transmit one of them. That's what I'll do. Let's transmit that data at least. Okay. Now, aside from that, there's just a thermometer. We'll transmit that data. Let's see. The light might be obstructing if I try and 
Okay, so which way are we? Okay, like that. Should have gotten RCS on this, I guess. Okay, so like that. Oh no, 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 no! Don't do that part. Okay, okay. Uh, ah, that's not a good idea. Okay, um, I guess we'll just have to lift off. Oh, not a good idea. Oh, poor ion engine. Okay. Not the best trajectory, but hey. Let's get this going in the right way. Right. Okay, now we want to head back to Kerbin. As usual, I'm on the wrong side for stuff. We need to be on an escape trajectory before we test the uh, ion engine. Hmm. Well, right now in my mind, this is all about remembering that this is Kerbin and not Earth. Or otherwise, remembering that this is uh, deadly reentry and far and not stock. Very complicated. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get our escape trajectory and then we'll test the ion engine and see if we get it counted. Okay, that seems a reasonable approach. We've got a Kerbin periapsis of 38 and a descending node of uh, 0.7. So that looks like, if you want to get stuff close to the KSC and maybe we'll uh, double orbit it, that looks good. So now we are on an escape trajectory, yes, out of Minmus. So let us attempt to fulfill the contract. It says, it confirms that this is true. Now, does it count as a test if there's no fuel? Yes, it does. Okay, contract fulfilled. Okay. So that's one, one relief. Let us continue out. Now there's a chance that the heating will not be so bad that I have to actually use the heat shield. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but there's a small chance of that. We'll see. I mean, uh, our periapsis is deliberately high here. It's not going to slow us down that much. And that's because I'm wondering whether I can save stuff instead of ditching it. And thereby save funds. Right? Pretty sure the tank still has fuel, so that should be the heavy part. But uh, the whole aerodynamics doesn't seem right. Okay, I'd say heating was not bad at all here. We really didn't need to worry about it, so what I'm worried about is the total lack of control and the fact that the atmosphere doesn't seem to be pointing us in the right direction. Um, yeah. Strange. Okay, so we've dropped our orbit to about there. Where is the KSC? Uh, somebody mentioned I should uh, plant a flag at the KSC to have it to really stand out, and that's uh, not a bad idea. Okay, it'll be three hours when we go around, so the KSC will be on this side then. 
just getting into uh, daylight. Okay. We are passing the KSC, I think. But we'll probably still be high on the Apoapsis side. We're already going up again. But that's good because the KSC will be on in full daylight. Oh, there's, there's the KSC. It'll be in full daylight when we come back around. Okay, we'll be hanging out in the atmosphere for a while now. And that will drag us down even more than we've already burned for. I think I'll uh, skip the the larger contract, the uh, Kerbodyne KR2L, for a little while. I think we'll get the science we need from this mission. And uh, we'll wait until we need the funds in order to do the that more drastic mission, testing that huge engine on Minmus. That one requires it to be landed on Minmus. On the bright side, uh, since it's so heavy, it probably won't hop the way this one did. But there's also a lot of downside to that one. Obviously, if it does hop, uh, we could have some serious problems and lose a lot of funds. So we're aiming to actually use our parachutes to carry this all down. What's our mass to make sure that it can handle it? 3.4? We'll probably have to dump some of the fuel on the way down. The The heavy part is actually the heat shield, probably. Unfortunately, since that's just dead weight. But Anyway, I don't know how much the heat shield actually costs. Okay, well that's the end of our fuel. Looks like we're still gonna pass the KSC. Uh oh. Uh, weird aerodynamic effects uh, taking hold here. Uh, determining. Oh, oh no 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 no. No, don't don't overheat the parachutes. Not the parachutes. Not the parachutes. Uh... Come on, parachutes. Hold out there. Okay. All right. Approaching safe speeds for parachute deployment. Yeah, turn this thing totally around, I think. So that might be bad, but let's find out. Nope, it's gentle. Whoa! Uh, I take that back. Ah, uh, so much for keeping everything <laughs> together. Ah, uh, well. Oh no! Somehow we lost the, the ion engine. Oh, that was a bit harsh. How did the ion engine uh, fly off? That's not fair. That was very expensive. We needed that back. Ah, oh, that's just that's that's not right. Uh, Fermera Space probably did that to me. All right, well we're, we'll recover, but we we got the science, but we didn't get as much funds back as we should have. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, 169 science, uh, except for the stuff that we transmitted. So we actually got more than that. Uh, we got 19,000 funds back, though that and because we got so close to the KSC, but uh, that's not as much as we could have gotten back if we had hung on to the the engine. No crew. And so, as was intended, we will unlock this uh, field science technology, which has the pack rat rover stuff. And so, uh, tune in next time. Uh, our first 
real colonization attempt will involve trying to send a rover and some other necessaries and perhaps getting some more science let's see what what else should we unlock we should unlock raviolis definitely yeah and maybe some of this probe core stuff here too so we'll aim for that sort of thing but we've got some serious parts we've got the the construction parts where are those so we've got all sorts of things that we could send to the moon and that'll be our first target so uh, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed our attempts to test out this whole situation, our new launcher, and uh, we set up a fuel tank in orbit and all that. So uh, thank you for watching all of that. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions for this series, we are just in the start of it. So if you have those, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.